Now we're going to take our discussion of polarity to the next level. We've looked at polarity of bonds, which is due to differences in electronegativity between the two atoms in the bond. Now we're going to look at polarity of molecules. Now remember, polarity is due to a separation of charge, and a molecule is polar if there's an overall separation of charge in the molecule. And our molecule will have a dipole moment if, there is, if it is polar. And remember, that's capital letter D for Dubai. Now let's look at why this can be a little bit complex. Here we have a molecule, carbon dioxide, that contains polar bonds. Oxygen is one of the most electronegative atoms on the periodic table, and carbon is not that electronegative. If we look at the directionality of our separation of charge in our carbon-oxygen bond, it's going to be directed to the oxygen from the carbon, directed to the oxygen from the carbon. And because these atoms are identical, their pull on carbon is going to be identical. Now, because of the symmetry of the molecule, 180 degrees apart, the pull on this side cancels out the pull on this side. And you can imagine if someone was pulling on the atom with force, and on the other side in this direction with the exact same force, the molecule's not going to move. So even though we have polar bonds, there is no net dipole moment, and this is actually a non polar molecule. So when we're looking at polar molecules, what, again, we're looking at is the separation of charge. And how we can tell if we have a polar molecule or not is we're looking for polar molecules of low symmetry. What do we mean by low symmetry? Either lone pairs on the central atom or different atoms bonded to the central atom. And by different atoms, I mean atoms of different elements. So here's an example of a polar molecule. We have our central atom, nitrogen. It's bonded to the same element, but it has a lone pair on its central atom, so it's low symmetry. This is going to be polar. Here we have a central atom. It doesn't have lone pairs, but it's bonded to two different elements, so this is polar. So this is how we're going to tell if a molecule is polar or not. And if it's not polar, then it has to be nonpolar which means there's no overall separation of charge. So let's look at water. Here we have another molecule that has three atoms in it, but because of the two lone pairs on oxygen, we have a bent molecule. And if we look at the directionality of uh, where the electrons go in terms of our polar bonds, we see that if someone was pushing um, on this bond and pushing on this bond, these two forces are not going to cancel out. The molecule would actually move. So there would be a dipole moment. Oxygen has lone pairs, so that means it's low symmetry, which means it's polar. And water is a very polar molecule. There's an actual separation of charge, the oxygen having a negative charge, and the two hydrogens having a positive charge. This polarity allows water to dissolve ionic compounds, such as table salt, and um, other polar compounds, such as table sugar. So let's look at these two different compounds. We have carbon tetrachloride, and then this um, compound, which is known as dichloromethane. Now they both have four bonding electrons around the central atom of carbon, but this molecule is bonded to different elements, two chlorines and two hydrogens. Therefore, the polarity of these bonds are not going to cancel one another out. There's going to be an overall separation of charge and an overall experimentally determined dipole moment. However, this molecule, because it is bonded to the same four elements, uh, same four atoms of the same element, and has no lone pairs, this is going to be nonpolar and not have a dipole moment. So this is low symmetry because it's bonded to different elements, and it will have an overall dipole moment, which makes it polar. Now we can think of our um, these electron uh, the polarity of our of our bonds as vectors or something someone pulling on the molecule and if 
the molecule would overall move, then there's going to be a dipole moment. So if we have high symmetry linear, and someone's pulling this way, someone's pulling this way, our molecule's not going to move. This is nonpolar. Now we have to have the same atoms bonded, and it has to be 180 degrees. We have a central atom that is bonded to the same exact atom, same exact atom, no lone pairs, all bonding pairs. Then this is going to be nonpolar. If we were to pull equally in these three different directions, this molecule would not move. Now this would be polar. With this would move, this would not cancel out, and this would be the arrangement of an atom that had a lone pair on it. This would also be the arrangement of an atom that had a lone pair on it. So whenever you have a lone pair or a central atom that's bonded to different elements, then you're going to have a polar molecule. Nonpolar molecules are the result of very high symmetry, either linear, trigonal planar, or tetrahedral geometries where the central atom is bonded to the same element. So pause the slide and see if you can determine if ammonia is polar or not. The first thing we need to do is write down its Lewis dot structure. Here is its Lewis dot structure. It has a lone pair in its central atom, so therefore it is going to be polar. Okay, it's going to be polar. Now pause the slide and see if you can determine whether these two elements, um, or these two, excuse me, molecules are going to be uh, polar or not. So if we look at our central atom, it has lone pairs and it's bonded to two different elements. So this is definitely going to be polar. If we look at our central atom here, even though we have a double bond, there are no lone pairs and it is bonded to the same element. So therefore, this is nonpolar. So your book goes through all these different strategies to figure out whether it's polar or nonpolar based on, I don't know, the vectors or whatever. But really, all you have to do is look to see if there's lone pairs on the central atom or if the central atom is bonded to different elements. If that's the case, it's going to be polar. And if it's not the case, it's going to be nonpolar.